Do you know what sounds too good to be true? Passive income does, but not with today's sponsor, Honeygain. Honeygain allows you to make money by simply sharing your internet connection. The app runs in the background using a fraction of your internet bandwidth, so consider it like an Airbnb for your Wi-Fi. Install the app on any of your devices and utilize your unused data with full potential. The amount of money you can earn won't be huge, but you can increase your gains with Honeygain's new mode, Jump Task. Use it to explore the crypto world and receive 50% more earnings while cashing out whenever you want without any limits. Honeygain does not have access to your personal data or device's storage, and it's 100% safe to use. So don't wait any longer. Try Honeygain now by clicking the link in the description below or entering code HISTORY when signing up and enjoy the first $5 added to your account. MAD – Mutually Assured Destruction What does MAD mean? MAD refers to the full-scale use of nuclear weapons by two opposing sides, resulting in one clear, obvious outcome – mutually assured destruction. The policy of MAD rests on the idea that if two countries or continents are equally as capable of destroying one another through nuclear attack, then there is no incentive for either side to pull the trigger or remove it. MAD can be thought of as a giant game of nuclear war chicken. It's the delicate balance struck between these countries capable of such nuclear warfare that means neither side will use the technology. Instead, nuclear-capable countries will keep each other in check, with the knowledge of the MAD doctrine, and that any sort of first move would result in global nuclear devastation. Another way to explain how the policy of MAD assures a tentative global nuclear peace is using Nash's Equilibrium. Nash Equilibrium proposes that in a game where each player knows the other's strategy, there is no benefit to changing your own. And that's where we find ourselves today, in a world where eight or possibly nine countries are capable of destroying the planet through nuclear war. We just have to hope no one is mad enough to launch the first strike. There are eight countries known to be capable of nuclear warfare, having previously successfully detonated nuclear weapons. They are the United States, the United Kingdom, Russia, France, China, India, Pakistan, and North Korea. There is only one other country that has never publicly announced their nuclear capabilities, although it's widely accepted that they have some nuclear technology, and that country is Israel. Of these countries, the first five, UK, US, Russia, France, and China, are members of the Treaty of the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, meaning they're committed to stopping more countries from gaining nuclear power and using their own to create nuclear energy. Very convenient when you already have nuclear weapons yourself. But not all these countries are fully capable of enacting the MAD doctrine. Only countries who have three legs of nuclear power are considered truly capable of MAD, as their own nuclear weapons cannot be wiped out in a single strike. This is known as the nuclear triad, and in essence it means a country capable of launching nuclear weapons from three separate places – the land, sea, and sky. Of the aforementioned eight countries, only five currently have this power the United States, Russia, China, India, and France. The concept of MAD existed long before the term itself was actually coined by military strategist Donald Brennan in 1962. One of the first references comes from nearly 100 years earlier in 1870. Wilkie Collins, an English author, wrote of the Franco-Prussian War, I begin to believe in only one civilizing influence, the discovery one of these days of a destructive agent so terrible that war shall mean annihilation and men's fears will force them to keep the peace. The first ever example of a country owning nuclear weapons was in 1945, when the United States dropped nuclear bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, helping to end World War II while simultaneously beginning the Cold War. Four years later, the Soviet Union publicly announced its own nuclear capabilities to the world by conducting a nuclear weapons test, detonating a bomb called the RDS-1. Upon the launch of the Soviet nuclear test, President Dwight Eisenhower of the United States announced a new strategic concept, the New Look Policy. A main component of this new concept was massive retaliation, which argued the U.S. should be willing to use deterrent threats and tactical nuclear weaponry to halt the expansion of the Soviet nuclear program. This marks the start of the first true possibility of MAD. 
It should come as no surprise to learn that the two countries who have been capable of the nuclear triad for the longest are Russia and the United States. Their development of nuclear weaponry was fundamentally what led to the birth of the Cold War after World War II. The Cold War was a period of tension and political unrest felt worldwide, beginning at the end of the war and continuing all the way up to the late 1980s and early 1990s. There is no definitive end date to the Cold War, although the fall of the Berlin Wall and the subsequent dissolution of the Soviet Union are generally considered to represent the pacification of the conflict. Nevertheless, the underlying threat of nuclear weaponry and the various knock-on effects of the period's proxy wars continued to be felt to this day. But it was in the 1960s when Cold War tensions and the threat of nuclear war reached an all-time high, with the world coming the closest it ever has to an all-out nuclear warfare during the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Cuban Missile Crisis occurred from October 16th to the 28th, 1962 and if not for one man, could have marked the end of the world. The crisis technically dates back a few years earlier to 1958, when the U.S. placed nuclear-armed ballistic missiles known as Jupiters in Italy and Turkey, directing them straight towards Russian targets. In the years that immediately followed, newly revolutionized Cuba was deeply alarmed by the impending threat of an American takeover, following the disastrous U.S.-backed Bay of Pigs invasion. In response, their leader Fidel Castro reached out to the Soviet premier, Nikita Khrushchev, offering to host Soviet nuclear launch sites on Cuban soil in an effort to deter any further American incursions. When President John F. Kennedy learned of this plan, he ordered a naval blockade of Cuba on October 22, 1962, kicking off the Cuban Missile Crisis and heightening the possibility of nuclear warfare becoming a reality. What followed was six days of tense meetings between the U.S. and the Soviets as they negotiated the disarmament of both the U.S.'s Jupiter missiles and the removal of any nuclear weapons already in Cuba. But it was during these negotiations that the scale came extremely close to tipping over, sending the world into total nuclear war and mutually assured destruction. In the midst of these negotiations, when each side was already assessing each other with extreme care, the U.S. did something incredibly risky and a bit stupid. A fleet of U.S. ships near Cuba identified a Soviet submarine lurking below the surface of the water. In an effort to force the submarine to identify itself and ignoring the rules of international waters, they began dropping signaling depth charges in an attempt to force the submarine to the surface. The Soviet submarine they attacked was called the B-59, and the crew on board hadn't heard from Moscow in a while. With no knowledge of what was going on above water and now finding themselves under bombardment, the men on board had to make a quick judgment call on if this meant nuclear war had broken out on the surface. The sub's captain, a man named Savitsky, quickly concluded that this meant war had broken out, and he immediately wanted to respond by launching a nuclear torpedo they had on board. But to do so, he needed one other man to agree, his chief of staff and the sub's executive officer, Vasily Arkhipov. Luckily for everyone, Arkhipov refused, saying they had to await orders from Moscow. Had he not, and Savitsky had launched that first nuclear strike, the world as we know it would not have survived. The next day, an agreement was reached on the surface between Nikita Khrushchev and John F. Kennedy, in which both countries would disarm their new forward nuclear stages. It was only much later that the world would become aware of how close the two powers had come to destroying the planet. Although Cold War tensions continued after this point, the Cuban Missile Crisis marks the most critical moment on the doomsday clock, in which the world was most likely to have erupted in potential nuclear annihilation. Since the end of the Cold War, there has not been a threat of MAD that seemed truly credible until recent events, but the nuclear-capable countries have continued to research, expand, and evolve their understanding of nuclear warfare. The whole world remains in a state of perpetual potential for MAD to occur, and although the original doctrine refers to two countries destroying each other, with the nuclear weapons that exist today, if any country were to truly exercise their nuclear power, it would likely spell the end for humanity.